What is the best explanation for the fine-tuning of the universe? Since about 1974, Brandon Carter, who is a physicist, discovered that the laws, constants, and initial conditions of the universe are exquisitely, infinitesimally, finely tuned for the possibility of life to exist. So this research over about 40 to close to 50 years has come in decade by decade by decade to discover that the universe lies on a hair's breadth. Who believes in this? Everybody. Everyone from Oxford University to Stanford University and everywhere in between. These are all atheistic or agnostic uh, uh, academicians who are at the top of their class, top of their field, doing research in physics and cosmology. And each one of them demonstrates the fine-tuning problem. And to this list, we could also add Richard Dawkins from The God Delusion. Now, the book is called The God Delusion, so we know he's not going to go easy on us here. He says that physicists have calculated that if the laws and constants of physics had been even slightly different, the universe would have developed in such a way that life would have been, and here's the key word, impossible. Impossible. Not that if you changed gravity just a little bit, instead of being a little over six foot tall, I would be a little over eight foot tall and would help my NBA prospects. Of course, LeBron James would be 10 foot tall, so that wouldn't help. <laughs> my point is, it's not that it would just change things a little bit. It's that life would, would cease to be. Life would not be possible if you started fuddling with the, the values of, of these constants and laws and initial conditions. Now, to be fair, there is one scientist out there at the University of Texas. His name is Dr. Ian Malcolm, who disagrees, so I think we could play this clip here. It's not possible, isn't it? There's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, expands to new territories, and crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but uh, life uh, finds a way. I show that clip for two reasons. One, I think it's hilarious. Two, I really like Jeff Goldblum a lot, so I just, I just... And people are like, even in The Fly by David Cronenberg? Yes, even in The Fly by David Cronenberg. I think he's amazing. Anyways, that's not even our topic for tonight. Now, some people have said, well, maybe we're thinking too narrowly about this concept of fine-tuning. Like, you're thinking of carbon-based life? Well, what if there was silicon-based life? You know, some other element combining with hydrogen. Well, let's think about that for a second. When you think about hydrogen, this is the most abundant element in the universe. So this would be the element against which you'd want to have uh, chemical compounds with the other elements on the periodic table. And as you view this, you start to see that different elements can create different chemical compounds. So lithium has four, beryllium six, nitrogen 65. Silicon, which is closest on the periodic table to carbon, has 55 chemical compounds with hydrogen. Let's compare this with carbon. Carbon and hydrogen can make over 29,000 chemical compounds. Let me just give you an example. CO2, one part carbon, two parts oxygen. That creates carbon dioxide, yes? If you were to replace carbon with silicon, silicon and one part silicon and two parts oxygen, you wouldn't have carbon dioxide, you'd actually have sand, a crystal. So people who say, well, maybe we could have a different form of life, I don't think you're quite grasping here if you're saying that, that's only adding to the improbability, which we're describing, not subtracting from it. And really, as we study this subject of fine-tuning, what we're seeing is that this would actually wipe out the periodic table. What are we talking about here? Let me give you just a few examples. The ratio of electrons to protons in the universe. This is finely tuned to one part in 10 raised to the 36th power. That's a one with 36 zeros after it. Some people are like, well, uh, maybe if you know, it's a little bit different, uh, life would have evolved a different way. No, we wouldn't have galaxies, we wouldn't have stars, we wouldn't have planets. Well, maybe evolution could have gone a different, no galaxies, no stars, no planets, nothing to evolve upon. The end constant, this is electromagnetism to gravity. These are two of the fundamental forces of physics. This is tuned to one part in 10 to the 37th power. If it was increased a little bit, no small stars, which we need a, a small star to have a slow burn to allow for an equitable, habitable planet. We need large stars in order to seed the galaxy with the heavier elements, no life. The gravitational constant put against the weak force, another of the four fundamental forces of nature. This is tuned to one part in 10 to the 50th. 
If it was larger, no galaxies. If it was smaller, the universe would have collapsed. Now, I know I threw a bunch of numbers at you there, and, and I know those numbers are incommensurably high, 10 to the 50, 10 to the 37th. Let's think about this for a second. The force of gravity is G multiplied by M1, the object of one uh, mass of one object, multiplied by M2, the mass of another object, divided by the radius squared between the two objects. So M1 could be the sun, and M2 could be the moon. Or M1 could be the Earth, and M2 could be Jupiter. You could change M1 and M2, and you could change the radius, the distance between the two squared. Those can all change. But the gravitational constant is the only thing that stays the same. And this is finely tuned to one part in 10 to the 40th power. That is to say, this is a one followed by 40 zeros after it. That's how accurate this needs to be. Let's say later tonight, you're feeling very lucky and you go to the, pick up your ticket for the Powerball. You want to retire and have your kids retire and have their kids retire. 200 million bucks, baby. <laughs> well, what is, what is the chances of you winning the Powerball? This is one in 300 million. That doesn't even come close to the gravitational constant. Well, what about the number of cells in the human body? What if a doctor said, we can cure you, but we have to pull out one cell blindfolded at random, and if we pull out the right cell, you'll live? Well, that would be one chance in 37 trillion. How many of you would sign up for that operation? <laughs> well, what about the number of seconds that the universe has existed? Let's say that we quantify the age of the universe, 13.7 billion years, into seconds. How many seconds would that be? that would be 10 to the 18th number of seconds. That's the, the accuracy you would need. So this isn't even getting close. Now, I don't want you to be, I know a lot of us, like myself, weren't really into math when we were in high school. I know a lot of us look at that 18, 10 to the 18, that's about half of 10 to the 40. No, these are exponents, people. <laughs> 10 to the 18th, 10 to the 19th is 10 times 10 to the 18th. 10 to the 20th is 100 times. 10 to the 40th, that is all the way out in the parking lot. Let's see if we can come up with a better illustration here. Let's say that we had a God's eye view of the entire material universe. And just because we're imagining, let's say that we had a God-sized Stanley tape measure at one end of the universe. <laughs> and we stretched this across the entire breadth of the universe. And we broke up the universe into inches. The gravitational constant could not be one inch weaker or there would be no life, life prohibiting. It could not be one inch stronger or there would be no life, life prohibiting. It needs to have the Goldilocks effect. Not too soft, not too strong, not too hot, not too cold, just right. But you might say, well, that is absolutely improbable. This is only 10 to the 28 inches. This isn't even coming close to what we're describing here tonight. Now, I've talked to some people and they said, well, yeah, but you're saying it's, it's one part in 10 to the 40th power. Yes. So you're saying there is a chance. I'm like, dude, that, that kind of reminds me of this movie I used to like. More like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> yeah! We laughed at that movie. Why? Why did we laugh at that scene? Because what is the redhead saying? There's no chance of us ever getting together. But he just can't get it through his mind. And we laughed at that, one in a million, that's funny. What if she said one part in 10 to the 40th power? We would have been wetting our pants with laughter. No, chance cannot account for this. And this isn't even the worst of it. The lambda constant, the cosmological constant, this is tuned to one part in 10 raised to the 120th power. That's 120 zeros. This figure is 0.00, 0 or 120 zeros and then a two. If it was any larger, the universe would be a hydrogen and helium soup, not propitious for life, to say the least, just filled with hydrogen. And with all that helium, we'd be talking really high all the time too. <laughs> and that'd be embarrassing, so. How about the low entropy of the universe? Roger Penrose calculates this to 10 to the 10 raised to the 123rd power. Did you know that if we were to write out the zeros according to Penrose, and we were to write a zero on every subatomical, uh, subatomic particle in the universe, that's 10 to the 80th subatomic particles, we wouldn't have enough zeros to write this number. 
Penrose says we'd fall way short just to write the number of the low entropy of the universe. All in all, we have somewhere between 30 and 50 laws, constants, and initial conditions. So what is the best explanation for this? That we got really, really lucky. That we hit the cosmic jackpot here. Or could it be, what could explain fine tuning? I don't know, let me think for a second. It seems like you'd need like a fine tuner. That would explain it. A uh, being which would be transcendent of nature, outside of nature, because if it was in nature, then it would be subject to the fine tuning itself. It would have to be outside of nature, incredibly powerful, incredibly intelligent, and to have life in mind. It could even imply that he could see us coming. <laughs>